Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to recap and explain a recently released film called Monstrous. If you like my recap videos then please subscribe to my channel. It really helps. The movie opens in the 1950s era, we see a boy named Cody and his mom Laura traveling in her bright and shining car. Cody was having a nightmare about falling in water. Laura was in search of a new house, she finds one in California. The house owner Mr. Langtree hands her the keys, he inquires her about her son to which she says he is sleeping in the car. Here Mrs. Langtree strangely stares at Laura. Laura moves in and settles down. She starts staring at one old photo of a lady. We will know about her soon. At night Cody and Laura slept in different rooms. The next morning while Laura was making breakfast, Cody started roaming around the house. He saw the adjacent pond and felt something strange there. He thought there is something there. Just then Laura arrives there, she was slightly freaked. She drags him away and orders him not to roam here without her saying so. At night she was watching a horror film where a monster drags the lead actress into the water. Laura falls to sleep watching this where she gets a nightmare. She feels the same movie monster dragging her to the water. Here she sees the same lady from the photo who says don't be afraid everything will be okay. Laura wakes up to the sound of Cody screaming. Laura checks on him who was clearly in panic. He points at the window and says out there I saw a monster. Laura thinks of this as a nightmare as just now she too had one. After making him sleep again Laura calls one Dr. Weaver. The doctor's assistant picks up the call and says the doctor is not available, she will pass the message. Then Laura picks up a box kept under her bed. It had cigarettes and booze. The next morning while leaving Cody for school one lady stares at Laura in a creepy way. Laura had joined as a typewriter in an office where a lady by the name of Jane compliments her dress. She was curious about it. Later Laura picks Cody from his school where she learns that he had made no friends. Kids were not interested in playing with him. These two head back to the house where after some time telephone rings. On the phone it was a male voice, it was Laura's husband with whom she had some issues. Hence she cancels the call. Just then Laura's TV malfunctions, even after many repeated attempts it doesn't turn on. Here the sofa had a scratch mark. It was normal up until morning hence Laura was a little confused here. The phone rings again and this time it was Laura's mom. Laura shouts at her for taking her husband's side and revealing her number to him. In his room, Cody was watching the pond, we see some spiral movement there. Mysterious water also appears in his room and some sort of entity emerges from it. Here the door of the room closes all by itself and Laura hears Cody's screaming voice again. She runs to Cody's room and calms him down. She again tells him that he had the nightmare again. In the background we clearly see the entity leaving this room, footprints were there. Later at night, we see Laura under a blanket. Since childhood, this was her coping mechanism to deal with stress. There her grandmom used to calm her down. The next morning Laura gets Dr. Weaver's call, she used to take meds for some illness. She was off those meds since she arrived here. She wanted to take them again but the doctor was not sure. He asked her to pay him a visit which rattled Laura a little. Late night Cody again saw something coming at him from that lake. Again an entity arrives in his room and grabs him. He screams again. It seemed Laura was not getting sleep, she was out for a light walk. She heard Cody scream and ran back to the house. For a strange reason the main door was locked from the inside, she breaks the glass panel and opens the door. When she arrives at Cody's room, Cody was surprisingly calm. He says in a creepy way that he wants to go home. Laura in anger says this is our house we will live here. All these things spook her a little. The next day she talks with the house owner Mr. Langtree. She tells him about his son's erratic behavior regarding seeing monsters here. Mr. Langtree dismisses it as a kid's imagination. He says he might have seen a raccoon. Mrs. Langtree asks Laura to pay for the glass panel. Later Laura took Cody to a park and tells him to play with other kids. Cody hesitantly tries to play with one kid but that kid runs away from him as soon as he saw him. Cody was upset with this, he starts throwing tantrums. He wanted to go home. After coming home Cody starts to draw. He drew a picture where he and his mom was with a black entity-like figure. 
Upon asking Cody names this black figure as a pretty lady. For Cody, the monster has become a pretty lady and he was considering it his friend. He wanted Laura to herd near that lake but Laura declines it. She ignores all this as a kid's imagination. At night Cody was again watching the lake, this time, the pretty lady smiles at him. Laura was working and watching TV at the same time. We see the entity behind her and this time she feels it. She quickly turns back, the entity was there. This scares the hell out of her and causes her to fall on a sofa. But here Laura feels something else, she felt as if she is drowning in water. Water was all around her and she somehow swims to shore. In reality, she wakes up on that sofa, she felt she drowned but all along she was in the house. Here Cody was sitting on the stairs and watching all this. He asked her, did you see her? Did you meet her? Laura was scared hence she orders him to bed. The next day Laura makes a few invitation cards as tomorrow was Cody's birthday. He asks Cody to distribute it among his friends. Cody was sure that nobody will come as he had no friends. Just then the lights at the house start to flicker, seeing which Cody believes the pretty lady will arrive soon. Laura in panic mode sends Cody to his room and picks up a knife. But the pretty lady was already in Cody's room. She sees Cody in the corridor. Here for the first time, we see that entity's face. It had long hair and an ugly skull face. Laura in panic stabs this entity which in return pushes Laura down the stairs. Laura passes out here. When she gains consciousness, she quickly grabs Cody and tries to run away from here, in their car. But the car doesn't start hence they sleep in it. The next morning Cody goes to school and Laura was busy preparing for the party. In the evening these two were waiting for the kids but nobody comes. Laura checks Cody's bag pack where she finds all the invitation cards. Meaning he never gave it to his friends. She shouts at Cody heavily. She starts to drink we see some drastic changes in her behavior. She talks with everyone in anger. One day she sees her house differently, it was all old and rugged. Seeing Laura's erratic behavior Mrs. Langtree gives an ultimatum of 30 days to vacate the house. Laura was busy with her drinks when Cody was near the lake. He hears someone calling him and hence enters the water. Laura finally saw all this from her window. She runs towards the pond and somehow saves Cody. The next day Laura gets a call from her husband. Like before she was not interested in talking with him hence she cancelled the call and headed to the office. At the office her mind was not on work, she made a lot of mistakes in one file. Laura's boss observes her condition and hears her story. She tells all delusional monstrous story of Cody here to which her boss suggests she consult a psychiatrist. Laura was furious hearing this and in a rude way, she resigns from her job. Later she heads to a bar where she meets an old friend. This old guy knew Laura, he calms her down, and both danced a little. After this Laura heads to school to pick up Cody but Cody was missing. Laura starts searching for him like a mad possessed lady but he was missing. One police officer saw Laura and asked her what's happened. As she explained everything, she thought her ex-husband might have kidnapped him. The officer brought her to the police station where we see a counselor. The counselor hears Laura's version of the story and says Cody is not with his ex-husband. She asks Laura about last year's incident in Arizona. Laura says one day last year I went out grocery shopping, my husband was supposed to watch Cody but he was busy in his recreation. When I came back home I found Cody in the swimming pool passed out. I picked him out, did CPR, and called 911. Paramedics revived him. Laura asks what that has to do with Cody's missing. Just then a mobile phone starts vibrating in her bag. The call was from her mom. The counselor who was looking old all this time suddenly appeared young. Laura was confused like hell. Counselor asks Laura to take it slow but Laura was freaked out. She runs from here where suddenly she was in modern time. Not in the 1950s. She saw her car which was bright and shining up until now was clearly old and rugged. She drives it anyway to her house which was also old. All the items in it were old and rugged as if nobody was living in it for a long time. Here Laura saw Cody sitting at the dining table, she was relieved. Cody again does the tantrum of going home, she starts fighting with Laura. He forcefully pushes her away by an invisible force. 
Then all of a sudden the house starts to shake, and all items fell. We see the entity dragging Laura into the water. Here she gets the same vision of Cody drowning in the swimming pool. Finally, she understood what was happening here. Cody actually died in that accident, but she believed that he is alive. Cody convinces her to let go this time. Laura takes him to that lake where that entity emerges in pretty lady form. Laura says goodbye. The next morning she leaves the house. Mr. and Mrs. Langtree were horrified in seeing their house in such a mess. They found the pretty lady's photo. Behind it, this was written. Grandma's car in 1959. Laura was now seeing clearly as she head back to her home in Mesa, Arizona. So let me explain here what the heck is happening. Laura lost her son Cody a year back. She was seeing him for quite some some time. Dr. Weaver had prescribed her meds. One day she runs from her husband believing that he is taking away her son from her. Laura was very fond of her grandmother, she was nice to her. She was like a coping mechanism. Hence when Laura ditched the meds her subconscious mind distorted reality. It made her believe that she is living like her grandmom and that the era surrounding her is the 1950s. That's why Laura was seeing her rugged car as brand new. She used to see the real reality whenever she was drunk. Drinks make your mind clear was literally true here. When Laura first arrived in California Mrs. Langtree was suspicious of her as she was clearly seeing her rugged car. Except for Laura nobody saw Cody. That's why he never had any friends. Here there are two opinions about Cody and the entity. One is that it's all in Laura's mind. She is hallucinating. The second one is Cody was a ghost all along. He was stuck here as he died unnaturally and somehow Laura was seeing him. Laura's kind late grandmom tried helping her. Cody was seeing her as a pretty lady whereas Laura was seeing her as a monster. Laura's mind was tricking her here. But when finally she understood what happening around her and her condition, she clearly saw her grandmom as a young pretty lady. This film is basically a mixture of mental trauma and supernatural activity. Overall it's a great horror film. Please subscribe to my channel. Give it a like. Thanks for watching. Take care.